it is a strange thing to consider waking up one morning to the news that Wizards of the Coast is no longer going to be printing MTG cards in your language. But that's exactly what happened to many people around the world today when Wizards announced that later this year they're no longer going to be printing cards in Portuguese or simplified Chinese. One of those affected groups of players is the Brazilian MTG community. And today I'm joined by Elba from Fezeno Nehegisi. Elba, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today about this. Well, thank you for having me, Joel. It, it, I'm very proud to be here. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, Thanks just, a lot. Just for a little context, we are literally meeting right now. This is our very first yep. conversation. We spoke for maybe 30 seconds before I started hitting record. So this is us meeting for the first time. Elba, I got to ask you very first question about all this. Do you think that this is Wizards getting back at the country of Brazil for Paulo Vitor Damaderosa going to work on Rune Terra and not being at the Pro Tour today? Man, <laughs> that that is a nice conspiracy theory. Unfortunately, my my tinfoil hat is in the wash right now, so I I, I think it's very unlikely. Okay, yeah. Uh, honestly, it, 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 there there is something that we've been looking at. It is an old complaint from Brazil how we have Paulo Vitor da Rosa and we have Jabayano, who's the only person who's been world championship twice. Right, and Wizards just never seem to care too much about us well and if that's not evidenced by today's news then i don't know what will give us that message clearly before we jump into the main topic can you please tell me what is this meme that everybody is replying to wizards on twitter with today it is a man with very little clothing on maybe none with a uh, message for wizards we'll say covering an important part of the picture to cover what is this what are we looking at here <laughs> you are, you are meeting the vampetasso Okay. Vampeta was a very famous soccer player in Brazil in the early 90, early 90s. And at the height of his career, he was one of the very first celebrities to accept posing for a LGBTQ porn magazine. Got it. Okay, that, that, that's the serious part of the meme. Yeah. And, well, he became... It was a very big deal. This, this is this happened back when homophobia was rampant in Brazil. The the public opinion was that that I am not exaggerating this, but public opinion was that gay people should be killed. Wow. It was, yeah, yeah. Like like so when a guy with his reach accepts doing something very public, very exposing to the gay community. It was a very big hit. It was very famous in the Vampeta magazine. Was very famous and just so so he kind of became like a a, a famous. I, I know people who don't don't know he used to play soccer and just know him because oh he's the guy that posed in right. that the the post naked for that magazine, and sometimes eventually in the last twenty years or so. Someone had the very bright idea of getting the centerfold of said magazine and covering his hockey stick. Deck box, with the, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the message intended to be conveyed. And, gotcha. you know, it, it, it is eye-catching. It is quite eye-catching. I will say that. Um, so let's talk about reaction then. Wizards makes this mm -hmm. announcement. Obviously, Twitter's exploding. What was your first reaction to this? And how do you feel about what the reaction is from the Brazilian community on Twitter at the very least? I have to say, I, I was completely blindsided. Uh, I was live streaming when the announcement hit. And it was... I don't know, near midnight, 1 a.m., something like this. And someone said on, on chat, Oh, did you see that Magic won't be released in Portuguese anymore? I'm like, what is yeah, this? Hilarious. <laughs> Thanks, chat. Yeah, come on, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. And then more and more people are saying, they're like, but you guys are fucking serious? Do you have a source on this? Oh, how about the WPN website? And I'm like, 
Oh, shit. So there was no writing on the wall for this at all. There was no warning. There was there, there, nothing. There, there, there was, there was, there was, there was. Uh, as a matter of fact, some, some people that are more cynical than I am were saying, oh, well, this was to be expected. I mean, two years ago, they, they closed all the Latin American Wizards of the Coast offices and laid off all the staff. Right. The writing was in the wall. Clearly, they didn't. Mean, oh, they, they canceled all events that would happen in South America for the past four, four years. But it's, it's, it's kind of like this. It's one thing for it to be written on the wall. It's, it's a completely different thing for it to actually happen. Right. Um, the relationship between Brazil and Wizards of the Coast has had its ups and downs. Uh, they have done some great things for us. They have done, done us very poorly. Then they come turn around and do some great stuff again, then they treat us like shit again. And, you know, kind of like... Uh, but, man, I, 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 I feel like I'm believing in an abusive relationship saying this. But I, I, I guess this time is... That's it. That's, that's, that's curtain. So what and, do you think this yeah, is going to do for the Brazilian MTG community? What is the reach as far as english cards to portuguese cards what what do people play what do people want to buy i'm, I'm gonna answer you with a little short story happened i did a, a new commerce event kind of like a open house but this was some six months ago it okay. wasn't an official empty open house just a store decided to do an event to get new players yeah i got it and and there were a couple people that were definitely not your stereotypical magic players, okay? There were uh, three or four people who who were over 50, over 50 years, years of age, yeah. and they were definitely not nerdy, you know? They, they, they kinda, w one of them said, oh, I like to play dominoes on the street and do this card game, so I, sure, I'll, let's see what this is like. Yeah. And there was this one lady that was, she wanted to learn to play, to play with her son and her grandchildren and she was she was very hyped and she was paying attention to the explanation of the rules and taking notes and so i, I explained the rules of the game and everyone got a little deck that the store made right. out of bulk honestly you know just, just to yeah, start her deck play yeah and i noticed that after i after I finished the explanation and this lady was very excited about being playing Magic, this is the game I'm going to play with my son because my son loves it, I'm going to connect with him, clearly. And she was, she was saying this. And then she sits down and play and she draws her hands, hands of seven card and she lights down. She, she's, she, 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 you know when you look at someone and they have that why am I here face? I approach her and I say, hey, what's up? Uh, is everything okay? And said, oh, I'm having a hard time with these cards. And I look at her hand, and by absolute chance, like three of, the, of her seven starting cards were in English. Now, this was an oversight of the store. The lady did not speak English, and the lady felt, you know, she didn't say so, but it's, it, it was very clear that she was ashamed of admitting that not speaking English was going to impact her ability to play this game right. that until this point she was very very hyped about playing and at the time it was a very easy fix i flagged the store and say hey this, this deck has a couple english cards in here by accident let's switch up hey opponent are you fine with that you just reshuffle and redraw and and everything went smoothly but that's that's kind of the thing yeah not going to be possible the moving forward yeah, I, I know I know many people who learn English through magic or improve their English through magic. Yeah. But to start the game in a language you don't speak, you kind of just don't. Yeah, very difficult. So, You've got this question then of like enfranchised players versus bringing new players into the game. The hmm. enfranchised players in Brazil, can you give us an idea of the Brazilian MTG community of, you know, tournament grinders, of people that are always playing? Are they typically playing cards in Portuguese or cards in English? Uh, there are two types. If you're trying to get the cheapest cards possible, you're going to play in Portuguese. They are marginally cheaper. 
And if you if you like a trader, if you're a card dealer and you like trading cards and selling cards, you're going to prefer cards in English because they're easier to to sell abroad, sell in Europe or sell in the US. But I know both types. I know people who only pick up cards in English and I know people who only pick up cards in Portuguese. I know people who pick whatever's cheaper and I know some heathens that might even pick up white border because hey <laughs> I, whatever i find first I, I, as long as it's legal it's good right yeah so i i wouldn't i wouldn't say among the franchised players i don't think that's going to make a huge difference okay i've been playing magic for 30 years i i the, the cards could be written in japanese for all i care it's fine. I, I know what they do. I, I literally live off of speaking on the internet about magic. Sure. I know what the cards do. Right. But how do you... Heck, I, I, I was... My, my desk is a mess because I was separating uh, bulk. Because I always donate bulk to social projects. I have two or three friends who work in public schools. And they make bulk decks to give away to students... And they, they all have different kinds. So I, I, I know this guy who rewards good students who have good grades with rares. And I think that's awesome. Nice. And I, I know this other guy who does not use rares. He only does commons and un uncommons. And he wants the, play, the, the students to play against each other and do their best calculations possible. You know, math, uh, combat damage and right. all that stuff. Right. So I, I, know, I know some three or four people who use Magic Gathering in the classroom. And when you're talking about elementary grade Brazilian children from public schools, if it's in English, it might as well be in Martian. That, 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 that's not going to fly. Yeah, that's that, fair. That, that's just off the window. I will say, though, having this conversation with you right now, my impression of how you feel about this is way less enraged than the brazilian players on the internet seem right now and look i'm not I, I understand that the internet is typically way more enraged than real life is actually represented but with your feelings on this are you somewhere in the middle do you think this is fine do you think this is bad where do you fall on that uh what i'm doing is uh, i have a background i've, I've, I've worked 12 years 12 -ish years in hr mm -hmm. so i i have a strong background of looking calm when the company does something incredibly stupid sure uh also i have a big enough channel that i have to choose my words carefully i understand so i don't want to i don't want to sound like doomsayer or anything but 100 percent. that's lying. why i wrote out the intro of this video here specifically so <laughs> there were exact words chosen i get you <laughs> i would be lying if I say I didn't consider making a video calling, they finally killed it. Mm -hmm. Because without, I, I, we already don't have LATAM offices. We, 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 ever since they closed all the uh, Wizards offices in Latin America, we've been having uh, import issues and logistical issues which have hadn't happened since the 90s they they just popped right back up because there's no one taking care of the of the small stuff and we also hardly have any we do have events don't get me wrong they're just not organized by use of the coast sure they're, they're, they're comparatively small events organized by local stores and and of course they're great they're great they're fine but they're not we don't have magic cons or worlds or pro tours or anything like that we, right we've had a pro tour in 1997 yeah we had it. a gp sao paulo that was that was in the last decade or so yeah between 2017 and, oh i think i think it, i think between 2014 and 2019 we had a gp sao paulo each year okay can you imagine what what years we used to have a Wiz of the Coast office right here in Sao Paulo? <laughs> yes, those years. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> so um, things have been going downhill, but we as a community have thrived. We, we, we get the cards and we play and we have fun and we do what we do, but no blow hit as hard as, well, we're just not going to have cards in Portuguese anymore. Yeah. When when um, 
Oh, well, the the second set after Shadows of Innistrad, Arcane Moon, Arcane right, Arcane... Eldritch Moon, yeah. Eldritch Moon, yeah. Uh, Eldritch Moon was delayed nearly a month. That didn't stop nobody. We just had a very late pre-release. It's fine. The same thing happened much more recently with uh, March of the Machines. I believe we had we had the pre-release was delayed countrywide for one or two weeks because of delays in importation. It's fine. It's fine. Nobody's gonna. <laughs> it's fine. It's just a week. We can just. Everyone's gonna play together next week. Oh, but what about little Johnny who traveled to the US and brought cards? Well, screw little Johnny. We, we, all of us, there are 240 million of us. So a couple people got the cards beforehand. It's, it's absolutely fine. We can, we can, we can manage this. One day, when we they cut off uh, the GPs and Magic Cones, yeah, it's fine. We can just make do our own events. Everything is fine. We'll, we'll, we'll just thrive. Not having cards in Portuguese, I'm like. The hell, you're stupid? Yeah, so or do you I think... Can... I mean, the question is then, and the speculation, the hyperbole, is that this is going to kill the game in Brazil. Do you think that this will be the nail in the coffin? It seems like every week there's I... something that kills magic. Will this do it? Well, and that's the thing. I have made a video, just like the professor made a video once, I have made a video mocking how every week right. something's finally going to kill magic. And... <laughs> it's an absurd notion. Magic is way too big to fail. There's nothing that can kill magic. Come on, don't be stupid. As a matter of fact, if you look at all the things that killed magic, most of them only made magic bigger and more and, and stronger. Right. Man, I, I I I hope very very hard to this thought, but I I cannot see. I I don't see a world where having English only cards, the game is going to perpetuate itself because as i said people who already play magic will keep playing magic the enfranchised players don't care what language most most enfranchised players don't care what language their cards are in new players on the other hand won't touch the game right. if it's in english i not only play magic i also play flesh and blood and that's the number one difficulty getting new players it's but the game is only in English. Yeah. Well, shit, I can play this with my kid. Oh, well, yeah. not, nothing can be done. The, the same thing goes with Lorcana. The same thing, uh, Star Wars Unlimited is about to be, to be released. And this, there is a discussion going on as well, because, well, the game was going to be in English only. And like, well, okay, sure. All the old adult white males with disposable income might play it sure but you know that's not the biggest part of the population down no. here no i have to and, imagine and, it's not and in in 30 to 40 years i don't think i'm gonna be around here anymore so so what just man yeah it's it is it is heartbreaking really yeah. i i i see all all the it, it, uh, all social work and all, all projects and all stuff with public schools and all the stuff with literacy and math and how great I have a friend who had a uh, she did a doctorate thesis on how the magic the gathering syntax helps kids with reading because you, you got to interpret the text and it's not always so clear and it is, it is not a book that the teacher told you to read. It is a game that you want to play because it's fun and you want to win. Right. So all that stuff is, is gone like tears in the rain. Let Fucking me ask you this. Have you, spoken, have you spoken to any LGS owners? How are they reacting to this? Are they worried? Um, I am going to an LGS in a couple hours, but not yet. I, I don't expect them to be very happy. Sure about this i would i would split lgs's in brazil in two kinds there are lgs's which are business focused and it's someone who want to make money and they made a business plan and they run the lgs as a company with profit as the main intent the other sort is people who wanted a nice place to hang out with their friends and play games so they decided to open an LGS. Right. 
And I'm not saying one is the right way to run your business and the other one is the wrong way to run your business. Uh, it's just that for the people who whose LGS is pretty much a clubhouse where you hang out with your friends and you just so happen to, you know, that the folk, this guy's focus is that the LGS makes enough money to pay rent and the salary of whoever works there mm -hmm. and anything extra is bonus. I don't expect this guy to be too worried because he's an enfranchised player, his friends are enfranchised players, and it's fine, it's fine, we'll, we'll manage. But for people who actually are running a business and, and don't, don't play with their own LGS and try, and they have um, events to try to gather new players, they have events to teach kids, they try to make partnership with, with schools and youth clubs, for these people, I think this is going to be a mess. Yeah, I know we're still at ground zero for this announcement. And, you know, you and the community are still trying to put your thoughts together. Um, the reaction on Twitter, what do you think of that? If you could speak to anybody that's, you know, obviously Twitter accounts or, or Wizards Twitter accounts are going through the, the Magicon announcements and all of our preview announcements. And, you know, they've very specifically and intentionally, I think, stuffed this announcement here right before there's going to be a ton of stuff to get excited about for the game but you know you've got the vocal contingent we saw it with 30th anniversary with the greed tweets tweet replies that had to get turned off what do you think about the online contingent what would you say to them well the, the, you know it's kind of the, one of the unspoken rules of internet you don't post uh child you don't kill the dog and you don't anger the brazilian community <laughs> It's, 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 it's gonna... We'll I, write those I, I, down. I, I, we'll honest, put those on the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I think the community as a whole has, has been very um, polite and and they're, they're being very... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, Do you think they, it's like polite? Do you think themselves. they've been polite? Oh, okay. They're defending themselves for sure. No, 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 not defending themselves, containing themselves. Oh, containing they're restraining, themselves. Restraining. They're, they're being very restrained and That's polite. restraint. Um, what we're seeing on Twitter right now, that's Brazilian restraint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Look at, the, look at the bright side. There's no Wiz of the Coast office building here in Brazil. That's that, that, true. That's a good thing. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's a good thing now. So they yeah. actually they all went up to Chicago this week to get as far away from y'all as they could possibly get and still stay in the United States. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Seattle's pretty far away as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess they did actually come a little bit closer. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, we, we we're outraged, and I don't think it's unreasonable. But it's it's kind of like Magic is still a niche game. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, card games are a niche game, and analog games are a niche game, and as such, on, on, honestly, if you run the numbers, if you crunch the numbers from a um, business perspective, Wizards of the Coast did the, the obvious decision. From a business perspective, sure, it is news. It isn't news to anybody that Brazil cannot compete in buying power with the United States. Uh, our our minimum wage here is roughly 200 US dollars per month and we still have a uh, unemployment rate around 15%. So we get paid less, our money is worth less and there are more people competing for fewer jobs. Of course we don't have the buying power of the US or Europe. But this isn't something new. It's not like, like Brazil had a sudden drop in its economy. This is how things have been since 1995. Yeah. We, we, we are in South America. We get our money's worth much less than the US dollar and Magic the Gathering is a very expensive game for us all. The time is, honestly, if, uh, if your team for hat isn't in the wash, my guess, and especially because they are still having the translated cards in Portuguese, my guess is that this isn't about cutting costs per se. It's about freeing bandwidth to print more product in English. That was my guess too, is that the demands that are being placed on Wizards now from 
their parent company to produce more than ever, which is not a mystery mm -hmm. and not a secret. Yep. Getting yep. that outside where their distribution, where their uh, manufacturing is, excuse me, and getting that further and further away seems to be more and more of a challenge, especially on a timetable. I wasn't aware of the delays that y'all had faced in just receiving standard sets for the past years. That's been going on since Eldritch Moon. That's wild to me. And so, yeah, you're probably right. Them finally being like, uh, we just can't do it anymore, especially when we've got a thousand sets a year that we've got to produce. There's just no way we can get it down there. If you want to have a laugh, uh, Ravnica City of, Guy of Guilds arrived here in Brazil seven years ago. The original Ravnica from, from 2004 arrived in Brazil in 2017. <laughs> there was there was some some mix. No, no, this isn't to say that there wasn't any Ravnica here in Brazil in 2004. It just wasn't officially distributed. It was brought over by people who imported the directly first or one. traveled. The first, to, the first set, the first Ravnica the City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was to, it took my yeah. brain a moment to process this. Not... Uh, for some reason, I was thinking, you know, Guilds of Ravnica around War of the Spark. No, those, no, 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 the, the, the very first one. Oh, gee. Wow. Yeah. Gosh. So, e e every now and then, this, this, this hasn't been going on since the Moon. This is, this is normal for us, okay? Importing to Brazil is a pain. Gotcha. That, that is, that is not, no news to, to anyone. And every now and then, what, for example, what happened to Ravnica is there was something wrong with the documentation and it was stopped by customs and said, nope, this, this pallet isn't coming in. This shipment is not coming in until you figure this out, until you sort this out, and you're, this, this is going to court and we're going to fight over this. And then it took nearly 15 years to sort everything out. And once everything was sorted, okay, cool, you can release this now. The same thing happened with Eventide, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Um, so th these, these, these are few and far between yeah. uh, sets that, that got lost for tens of years, but it, it does happen. Before Wizards opened an office here, it was very common for everything to be delayed a week or two here in Brazil, or even a month or two. For the past year or two years, very common delays, but you know, a week, nobody's gonna. Sure. Just a week, man. Right. You know, we can leave. Yeah, it's not getting a set 10 years later. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't make any sense to me. So then I want to wrap up with this. Uh, if you could just look right into camera. I don't know if anybody from Wizards is going to be watching this or uh, going to check this video out. But if you could, what would your message be for Wizards of the Coast today directly? What would you say to them? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, how much can I curse in your channel? You can curse all you want, my friend. Bando de fila da puta. You guys are so blinded by greed. You guys are burning so much goodwill. You, the, the company took 20 years of becoming one of the best things that ever happened in board gaming and analog gaming and just is just burning it all in the name of short-term profits by god you don't have to accelerate your downfall so much you can i swear you you can it, it is fine you can just double your profits every year you don't have to make more money than that and you'll still have a growing community worldwide growing community while every new card game that's coming out is working to be translated into Portuguese, you guys are stepping out of the ring. I don't know who the hell had this idea, but this person should be taken to a room without windows and fired on the spot. Elba, I appreciate you joining me here on the show. Hey, that was good. I liked it, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. want to leave it right there. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time out to shed some light and give us some perspective on this that we just don't have because the news came through and my brain couldn't process the reality of that being something that was happening. And so I just had to seek out somebody that could speak to it firsthand. So I thank you. Well, um, 
uh, thank you for having me. Uh, sorry for this being such a rushed thing. It did, for everyone who's watching, we did not set this up ahead of time. I, I was <laughs> I wasn't even home. I got a message from Jose. Hey, can you talk today? I'm like, yeah, I guess. Let me try. But uh, for all you Americans, if you want to think how this feels like, just imagine if, of course, this isn't going to happen because we is an American company. Sure. But just imagine. If they just said, you know what, we, we won't print magic in English anymore. Now it's going to be only French, Japanese, and German. And it's about, I guess it's about the same thing. It's like, well, so what now? Do, 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 do we still play? Do, do I play with my old cards? How do I get new players? It is the exact same thing. It just feels like being tossed aside.